<laughs> hello, hello. My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at uh, the mechanism of antibiotic action. Antibiotics are used in, in uh, medicine and agricultural science for bacterial infections and uh, to also deter bacterial growth in uh, food. There are several classes of antibiotics, and in this uh, presentation, we are going to explain the bactericidal and the bacteriostatic activity of uh, each antibiotic class that we are going to look at. So, within this lesson, we are going to look at penicillins, we are going to look at cephalosporins, we are going to look at aminoglycosides, we will look at tetracyclines, we are going to look at macrolides, and also look at the fluoroquinolones. Okay, so the first antibiotic that we are discussing is uh, penicillins. Penicillin uh, is an antibiotic uh, that was first discovered in uh, 1928 uh, by Alexander Fleming. Okay, and uh, it was uh, through some accidental experiment where he left a bacterial culture uh, near a window and then it got contaminated and after some time it was found that um, the bacteria that were on the culture media had been uh, killed or uh, were killed by the, the fungal material. So because of this uh, accidental uh, incident uh, that happened where Ed, uh, Alexander Fleming uh, discovered penicillin, it led uh, uh, to the discovery of the compound that was active in um, killing these bacteria that were on the culture. So this, co this compound was later named penicillin by Fleming himself. And uh, penicillin is considered as part of a class of antibiotics that are known as beta-lactams. These antibiotics are characterized by a beta-lactam ring in the molecule uh, center. And the function of uh, this drug is to interfere with the synthesis of a bacterial cell wall. Beta-lactam may stop uh, peptide chains from uh, cross-linking during the formation of new peptidoglycan chain, which is a major compound of the bacterial cell. Thus, a bacterium cannot necessarily maintain its uh, structure integrity when uh, you have destroyed the cell wall. It becomes vulnerable to a lot of things entering it. Hence, it goes into lysis. So the structure of the beta-lactam uh, ring or the beta-lactam is uh, similar to the subunit uh, that makes up the peptidoglycan, okay, that is needed for the formation of the cell wall. So it therefore acts as a competitive inhibitor to uh, transpeptidase, which is an enzyme that is needed uh, to, for the cell wall there to form this peptidoglycan and then form up the cell wall. So the enzyme involved here is... Uh, transpeptidase. So an enzyme involved in the cross-linking of peptides, also called penicillin binding protein, okay, will interfere with this and hence the cell or the bacterial cell will fail to form the bacterial hole and it's becoming vulnerable or going into lysis or the cell uh, destructs. Okay, so what we are simply saying is that uh, penicillin belongs to antibiotics non that are known as beta-lactams. Okay, and these beta-lactams uh, destroy the cell wall of a bacteria, preventing it from um, uh, effectively uh, uh, continuing to perform its function. Okay, so when uh, that has happened, then um, it will uh, cause the destruction of uh, the of the cell. The next uh, antibiotic that we are going to look at are cephalosporins. Okay, so cephalosporins also belong to antibiotics known as beta-lactam group. Okay, they are very similar to penicillins but uh, contain a different uh, structure which provide increased resistance to, um, to inactivation by an enzyme which can be produced by certain bacteria called beta-lactamase. Okay, so if you, for instance, have some, um, uh, let's say some bacteria 
that have developed some penicillin resistance. Okay, this enzyme known as beta lactamase will be produced, and penicillins will fail to, to perform their duty of destruction of the cell wall effectively. So you can resort to using cephalosporins. Okay, so they belong to the same group, but they are very similar with the penicillin. But with these, they have an increased resistance to inactivation by an enzyme which can be produced by certain bacteria, which is called beta-lactamase. So this one is produced in resistance to penicillin. So cephalosporin antibiotics can therefore be used when penicillin is ineffective, okay, where the, the resistance has developed. So beta-lactams for, uh, for cephalosporins have an R group or have R groups uh, that modify the antibiotic to give a different spectrum of activity when it is destroying the cell wall. Cephalosporins have two R groups compared to one group that we see in penicillin. Hence, this will help to create more opportunity for chemical modification of the bacterial cell wall in its destruction when we are using antibiotics. Okay, so cephalosporins being a very good uh, second choice of drug if you are treating penicillin-resistant bacteria. Okay, so the next group of antibiotics that we are going to look at are aminoglycosides. Okay, so aminoglycosides are bacteriostatic in nature. When I say bacteriostatic, I just mean they slow down the growth and the reproduction of bacteria without necessarily killing the bacteria. So these antibiotics inhibit the synthesis of proteins by binding to the 3S bacterial ribosome subunits. When the subunits uh, bind together, they produce uh, the proteins that are needed by the cell. Okay, so ribosomes in uh, animal uh, cells, we have 80S, okay, and then uh, they are also made of subunit 40S and 60S. But when you talk of bacteria, we have 70S, so when, uh, if we have uh, 70 ACE subunits and 30 ACE subunits within uh, the bacteria, we are going to be specific in uh, modifying this subunit within the bacteria so that um, we can achieve uh, the goal of bacteriostatic uh, nature of BZ antibiotics. So amino glycosides, what they will necessarily do is that they will prevent the effective uh, proofreading of the proteins that are produced by the bacteria. They will cause incorrect amino acids. Amino acids, these are basic uh, building blocks of proteins. So they are going to cause incorrect amino acids to be inserted into the peptide chain. Okay, hence this will create a misfolded or faulty proteins. Okay, so the, their function here in the salad we are saying, many of these are structural proteins Okay, so if they are of defect because of the activity of uh, amino glycoside, it will cause um, the bacteria to fail to repair itself. As you know, we need proteins, even as human beings, to repair one out tissue. So even a bacteria will need proteins in order for it to repair one out tissue and sustain, uh, and, and sustain its life. So if there is no use of these proteins, the bacteria will go into lysis or the bacteria will fail to reproduce. So it will not undergo growth because there are no proteins to help build up uh, its growth. So aminoglycosides just prevent effective proofreading of proteins that are produced by the bacteria, hence causing an incorrect amino acid to be inserted within the peptide chain creating a misfolded or faulty proteins. The best example the study that I can give, it's like you're building a house using concrete blocks, and then you have um, pseudo blocks that are made of ice. They look more like concrete blocks, but they are made of ice. What will happen is that it will weaken the structure, especially when the sun comes, because those pseudo blocks, pseudo meaning false blocks that are made of ice, are going to melt away and weaken the structure. So that's why we are saying um, if uh, the proofreading of this protein is incorrect, the bacteria will fail to undergo cell growth 
and reproduce. Hence, we are saying amino glycosides are bacteriostatic in that they slow down the growth and the reproduction of bacteria without necessarily killing the bacteria. Okay, so now we move on to another group of uh, drugs. And remember, please, when we're talking about amino acids, we're saying uh, they inhibit synthesis of uh, proteins by binding to the 30S um, bacterial ribosome subunit. So even this other drug that we're talking about, tetracycline, also inhibit synthesis, okay, by binding to the 30S ribosome subunit. But it has a different method of action as compared to amino glycosides. Instead of preventing proofreading of the peptide produced, they stop the binding of the transfer RNA to the ribosome, stopping the protein synthesis. So they interfere with the transfer RNA, okay, to the ribosome so that uh, the protein that the bacteria will need to reproduce or repress those on out, that will not happen. So preventing the binding of transfer RNA to the bacterial ribosome effectively will prevent proteins being produced by the bacteria leading to cell death. So that is what Nesali tetracycline do. So they bind to the 30S subunit and then when they bind to that unit, they will stop the binding of transfer RNA to the ribosome, hence stopping protein synthesis. So when you see people talking about the mode of action of VU, tetracycline uh, being um, uh, protein synthesis inhibition is uh, because of this uh, uh, because of this act. Okay, so now we can also look at another group of antibiotics known as macrolides. Okay, so macrolides have a similar function to amino glycoside and tetracycline. Okay, in that uh, they inhibit the synthesis of proteins by binding to the bacterial ribosome, but they bind to the 50S subunit, okay, of the bacteria. So by doing this, they will stop the formation of peptide bonds between amino acids, uh, preventing protein synthesis. So they bind to the 30S subunit, effects similar to those of amino glycoside and tetracycline, but they weaken the in between uh, chains between the peptide bonds, okay, these amino acids within the bacteria. So when they weaken those, then it will affect growth and then bring about the bactericidal effect, okay, of the drug or the destruction of the drug. Okay, so then um, the last antibiotic that we can talk about is uh, fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones inhibit the activity of the DNA gyrus, which is a type of uh, toposomyris found in prokaryotes. Okay, so prokaryotes are just single-celled organism that lacks a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. So fluoroquinolones are going to inhibit the activity of DNA gyrus, which is a type of uh, toposomyris found in prokaryotes, which then will prevent uh, which will then uh, prevent a harmful DNA modification, which is called um, supercoiling. Okay, so supercoiling occurs when DNA strands uh, are wound together uh, too tightly or not tightly enough. Okay, so this wounding or this um, that coiling, okay, so coiling within the DNA. So, and doing this supercoiling is essential for a bacteria ability to replicate. So DNA guidance is a useful target for antibiotics in order to prevent this. So human cells do not contain DNA guidance and have a different type of toposomyelis instead. So when we target that of the bacteria, then we are going to just kill the bacteria that is affecting a human being and not necessarily temper with uh, the normal human being function. So there we have it uh, today. We have been uh, looking at um, we have been looking at mechanism of antibiotic action. So we have just looked at some few antibiotics that is uh, penicillin, cephalosporins, amino glycosides, tetracyclines, macrolide, and fluoroquinolones. There is a big range of antibiotics out there that we would have looked at, but for the sake of just this discussion, 
we have just looked at those. Remember, antibiotics are used in medicine and, and agriculture against bacterial infection and bacterial growth in the food. And uh, there are several classes of antibiotics that we can uh, talk about, but we have just looked at their bactericidal and bacteriostatic activity within this lesson. Okay, so the first drug which we talked about was penicillin, which is said is an antibiotic that was discovered by Alexander Fleming, okay, in 1928, and it was uh, through more of um, not purposeful but an accidental way when he was actually trying to do a culture but left the window open. And then uh, this fungi penicillin, when it uh, I got contact with this culture, it destroyed some of these bacteria. So this fungi, uh, Fleming's named it uh, penicillin. Okay, so penicillin is now part of blood uh, antibiotics that are used and it belongs to beta-lactam. Okay, antibiotics. And then we also looked at another beta-lactam antibiotic that is good against penicillin resistant. Uh, and and uh, this is resistant bacteria that produce beta lactamase. Okay, so the second antibiotic uh, that we looked at was separosporins. Okay, so separosporins can help where penicillins fail to effectively kill the bacteria. These separosporins can come in and do their work. So that is why it's important that you leave the professionals to prescribe antibiotics for you because they know which choice they have to go to when the other one fails to work out. And we are always concerned to prevent uh, uh, increased bacterial resistance within the community by the indiscriminate use of these antibiotics in uh, animals, okay, and other, uh, other areas, okay. So if you use them where you're not supposed to, it may lead to uh, poisoning within the food chain and bring about bacterial resistance because we would have brought them or eaten those same animals within the food chain. And then we start having these resistance. Okay, then now we looked at amino glycosides that bind to the third ASA bacterial ribosome subunits. Okay, so these uh, subunits, okay, bind together and produce the proteins that the cell necessarily needs. But when you look at the human beings or animal cells, they have 80 S, okay, and uh, 40 S and also 60 S C, uh, ribosomal subunits. But when you're talking about the bacteria, they have the 70 S, okay, and uh, can be built from uh, the 30 S subunits. So amino glycoside necessarily prevents the effective of leading, okay, of uh, these proteins that are produced by this bacteria. Hence, when this has been modified, okay, then there will be problems or a fault in the proteins that are produced for the bacteria to grow and reproduce. Okay, then we looked at tetracyclines, which have also bind to the third S ribosomal unit, but as they do this, they then interfere with the binding of transfer RNA to the ribosome, and stopping protein synthesis. So in other literature, you can uh, see that the mode of action of tetracycline may be coated as in, bind to it to transfer RNA and uh, and this stop of protein synthesis. Okay, then now we also looked at macrolides. Macrolides bind to 50S subunit. And when you're talking about macrolides, we are saying they have similar actions with amino acids and tetracycline. Okay, but for macrolides, we are saying they bind to the 50 subunit and they stop the formation of peptide bonds between amino acids preventing uh, protein synthesis. They weaken the protein linkages within the bacteria, hence weakening the bacteria. Then when you talk about fluoroquinolones, okay, fluoroquinolones uh, inhibit the activity of DNA gylase, okay, which is a type of toxomyelase found in prokaryotes. Okay, then um, this will then prevent a harmful DNA modification, which is called supercoiling, okay, the bacteria that they can use in order to um, evade antibiotic activities. So this is necessarily what we intended to cover uh, for this lesson. And uh, the diagram uh, just uh, before me is uh, trying to simplify this lesson on necessarily what happens in the mechanism of action 
of different antibiotics. So um, all, the, all this lesson has been simplified by the diagram in the background. Okay, so if um, you are a pharmacology student and uh, you want to understand more, this lesson can be made available with uh, notes uh, using any of our links uh, within our YouTube channel and other social medias that we use in order to conquer ignorance. So thank you and keep studying.